Cavern of Souls was bugged for a really long time, to be fair. It didn't work with secondary creature types. Update the stream decker, yep. Would love to play first with my aggro deck. Um... Sure. I could see someone more experienced and more disciplined telling me I should mulligan this, but this seems fine. Seems fine. I mean, if we draw a lead to Stampede or a Collected Company, this hand's great, right? I feel like when your deck only has 18 lands in it, like, what are... What are the... Like, your odds of having an unkeepable six are really high in a deck. My favorite deck, take all my boots for the th bits for the 3050 oh, luck. Thank you for the bits. Hogland is my hero. Uh, I'm actually just going to go ahead and attack here with this Heritage Druid. Yep. Yep. That's well put. It is what makes it distinct from humans. This deck's combo aggressive draw is also generally a little bit faster than humans. Its card advantage is much better too, right? Like lead the stampede and collect a company are both card advantage that's much more powerful than anything humans can put together. Ding. Remember that time I said we just needed a collected company chat? And nobody believed in me? <laughs> nobody wanted to believe in me, chat. You just wanted, you just wanted me to mull again. Well, I believed in me, chat, and here we are. Here we are, chat. I believed in me. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. You know what's really awesome about this deck list in particular? This deck list doesn't have anything that shuffles in it. I'm kind of in love with this deck list right now. I'm kind of, I'm kind of in love with the zero shuffle modern deck. Blood Moon Resolves. Get them. Get them, tiny green men and women. My people. My people need me. Boy, do I have a Battle of Wits deck for you. <sighs> Dead. Dead you. All right, sweet. Um, we just bring an Elvis champion because they're a green deck? I should probably cut Shaman of the pack, right? Or do we think, do we think they're going to trim Blood Moon? Is cutting two of these right? I kind of want to cut some of these as a hedge. What do you think of just doing this? I don't think I care about their enchantments. I don't think I care about their enchantments. Yeah, I think I'm just going to swap these. It's magic online, so I never like to assume people are going to do what I think is correct. So I think I'm going to hedge. And if we, it's also like trading a three drop for a three drop, which is pretty good. It keeps our keeps our curve similar. All right, this one I'm gonna mulligan. Where are my one mana spells? Ding, ding. Hey, oh, let's go. 
Hey, oh, let's go. Do 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 do. 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 Do 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 do. See, they left. They left stone rings in against us. So like, all bets are off. I'm gonna cast that. This way I can still recover post anger of the gods here, post faltering suns. Uh, I refer to them as Yu Gi Oh cards because they have the stupid border on them. That makes them look like a not magic card. And like. We got three for one by this anger, but like this lead the MP drew us three cards. So like, feels like kind of a wash, right? Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Just very unlucky. No plays. Just the un just the unluckiest. That's kind of unfortunate that uh, they're taking us off our black source. This is actually our only other Shaman of the Pack in our deck. They're probably dead though, right? This Elvis Champion has to be lethal. I haven't, I haven't mathed yet, but I'm pretty sure that's 14. It's a good clean kill. Good clean kill. That was quick. The old seven minute two zero. Get him. This is a good league to end the night with. Smorking some people. Hey, Finny, Finny Gank. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. There's a lot of really excellent people streaming on Twitch right now, so I appreciate you choosing to support my content this month with that. Thanks for helping me do what I do here. I do appreciate it. Ooh. I. Man, this list is super clean. I, I guess I hadn't, I didn't pay attention to the details when this list top eight of the Grand Prix. When people ask me about what elves list I recommend moving forward, because for, people ask that a lot for some reason. This this archetype is popular. This this list looks great. I'm hoping, I'm hoping the rest of these matches go as smooth as that one. But like, it's it's, it's like all four ofs, lead no shuffling. Lead the stampede is excellent. Just like really love a lot of what's going on here. It's weird seeing a top tier deck in the donation queue. People ask you, right? It's weird, Zach, I know. I don't under, ooh, ooh. I'm gonna smack them for one here. I think they're gonna block. I don't think they can afford to block on the draw. Thinning doesn't statistically matter. The only thing that may or may not be worth worth changing or testing in here is there's a good chance you you might want Horizon Canopy over some of these forests, but like that does make you worse against Blood Moons. So like it's not strictly free. They're playing Devoted Druid, so they could kill us next turn. All right, please don't kill me. Survey says. That doesn't sound like lethal. Yeah, the GP list wasn't playing cavern. I, I added four caverns. I cut four forests and added four caverns to the deck. 
wonder if that was a mistake. I wonder if they intended to do that. Honestly, Dogwood Cow, lead the Stampede is better value than Bloodbraid Elf. So, I think they do pretty similar things. Because he couldn't afford them. Yeah, I'd believe that. I can't, like, Blood Moon is the only reason not to play Cavern of Souls, basically. Blood Moon and, like, something like Fulminator Mage or things that destroy your, your non-basic lands. Really? Me, me too. I always think of me when I think about how to dress too. All right, so this is going to be elf. Should I shaman and then with the shaman trigger on the stack collected company because I could hit another shaman and kill them? Is Azuri lethal? Is the Azuri guaranteed lethal? This makes five, and then this is six, 11, uh, 16, but they could block and not die. I think I'm just, it's not lethal. Chat, come on, we can fucking count. They're at 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I can attack for six plus 10 is 16, so. Azuri forces them to block with all of these, but they have this in play. They can also untap this and gain two more. Yeah, I'm just gonna play the Shaman of the Pack and cast my Collected Company. If we're gonna, if we're gonna give them a potentially another turn, I would like to just try and kill them. This is actually gonna force some jump blocks too, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yep. Jamin, Jamin, tilt. So if I Coco before Shaman there, I would have been lethal. Well, it's not strictly correct to always Coco, to, sh to Coco before Shaman, right? Because I guess it was over lethal if I Cocoed into another Shaman anyways. Okay, yeah. So again, the, the, the why matters, Mox Moxie. My gut said I wanted this Shaman in play if I hit another Shaman off there. But if I hit a second Shaman, I was going to have more than lethal anyways. So I should I should have in fact waited. They have to block all three of these things, but I definitely that sequencing was incorrect. So they could have they could have they could kill us next turn if they have if they have vizier and then a payoff. You you could in fact build the deck on a budget without Cavern of Souls. And you will only be marginally affected in a, in a small subset of matches when you go and you draw this and don't have black. So if they have an infinite mana payoff here, I could have killed them last turn with better sequencing. I'm not gonna make them generate infinite mana, but I'm gonna wait till they put the card that's lethal on the table. They have Field of Rune in their deck. Why is there Field of Rune in their elf deck? They just whiffed on lead the stampede. 
Woof. Can you whiff on six more? Magic is a skill game, chat. Magic, I am, I am a skilled, skilled magician. I am a skilled magician, ladies and gentlemen. We're so lucky. We're making, we're making up time for that coin flip league, right? We're making up time for the coin flip league. Making a note to file for comp for that coin flip league, speaking of. Yeah, I'll put the Elvis champion into play the turn we kill them. It's fine. It's fine. I know it's symmetrical. I, I appreciate the friendly reminder. You, you put Elvis champion into play and then attack for lethal. Hearthstone definitely has more of it. It certainly does. I agree. Those damn kids in the Hearthstone. I love this artwork. This The art in Dominaria in general is just such A plus work. What percentage of my leagues do I end in filing for comp? Not actually that high. I play, and I play, I play a lot of magic online to set the bar. It's probably like one in a dozen or less. Probably even like less than one in 20. I could look. This is really weird, chat. I feel like our opponent's just copycatting us. Can't you, can't you just be original opponent? Is there an original bone in your body? I love when the people on delay finally pop pipe into chat. Life is swell, disc jockey. Hanging out, wrapping up the evening with some elves here. We're 1 0 in this league. We're currently up a game in this match. N Chat, in this story, I'm the hero. And if I'm the hero, that means they're copying us. Get with the program. They're playing. Oh no, they don't have any forests, chat. Our elf is our elvish whatever is no good because they don't have any forests. It's turn 80 in the elf mirror and they don't have any forests in play. Doop. 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 <laughs> Am I dead? Am I dead yet? That's not lethal. They could flip Westvale Abbey. So it's like first one to an Azuri wins. I 
Does flipping Westvale even race my board? It's gotta, right? They've been five elves. Let's leave them with four elves. I guess they have a bunch of three threes and I have two, two twos. All right, I'll take an Azuri, please. One Azuri, please. Get my nug in here. I assume they're just gonna take six. I guess trading there is better if I rip an Azuri. Well, if I rip Azuri, I'm still attacking for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So I'm actually gonna come up short if I rip an Azuri now, so I shouldn't have attacked. Yeah, that attack was bad. That attack was bad. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Oh yeah, we probably could double overrun, huh? All right, whatever he says. It's not gonna be good enough. All right, let's try another play here. Both of us kind of lack payoffs, but they had the Ormondal to run us down. Oh, this is unfortunately not a keep. If we had a Land War Elves in there, it would be quite excellent. We could just die here, but if we hit a second land, Visionary helps us find a third, and then this hand is just insane. Just drawing one mana elves is also good. Looks like we're dead. I actually was just about to say that this deck mulligans pretty well because we have cards like Lead the Stampede and Collected Company generate card advantage for us. So when we have eight sources of card advantage, I probably should mulligan more aggressively than I have been. Generally speaking, decks that have card advantage in them mulligan better than decks that don't. Depending on how fast the rest of their hand is here, we could have a chance in this game still. We get to go land into Arc Druid, into tap these two plus the Arc Druid to Lead the Stampede. And then, like, depending on how good these lead the stampedes are, we could snowball pretty hard. We'll see. They have uh, they have a good start here too, and they did not miss a land drop like we did. We ba we basically lost the play, right? We basically lost the play. Is what happened here with my stumble. I don't allow comments on my YouTube videos because I don't think I've ever scrolled underneath a YouTube video in my life and read comments and been, man, that was a life enriching experience. I should go back and do that again. And I'm someone that believes if, um, I'm, I'm someone that firmly believes that if you're cultivating an online community, you should be responsible for the things and the words that take place in that community. So if I was going to have YouTube uh, comments enabled on my YouTube channel, I would feel obligated to moderate those comments. And uh, while this is making some money, it's not making enough to make me feel the need to read YouTube comments. TL, TLDR. All right, please don't kill me next turn.
1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I believe I'm going to 5. Yep. I just kind of want to draw a black source. Can I put enough elves into play here that I can kill them from 17? Let's find out. Don't look like it. If we did a black source here, maybe. Gosh, we got so close. Got so close there. <sighs> turn, turn too slow. No, they had enough blockers, right? I could have attacked if this was a 5-5. Five five. That wouldn't have been enough. So I could I could have made three here, untapped this, paid three here, and then pumped this once. Yeah, yeah, I didn't I didn't count that, but it wasn't enough because they have four power worth of blockers. So this would have been a 5-5, five five, and they're effectively at eight. All right, that's pretty close. All right, we're one and one, learning some things, running some people over, getting run over a little bit. We really need a birch floor ranger. You're not wrong. At any rate, thank you everyone for hanging out here tonight through the end. It's gonna be our last league of the night. We have three more matches, so don't go anywhere just yet. My name is Jeff Hogan. I'm a full-time streamer and content producer here on Twitch. I stream 30 plus hours a week of magic. If you're enjoying my content, please consider subscribing to my stuff. My subscribers are what keep me here full-time. You can also support my stuff by supporting my sponsors, mtgotraders.com. I'd love to buy and sell some magic online cards with you. If you use code Hoagland PayPal at checkout with them, you'll save 8% on your singles orders there. Coolstuffinc.com buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including TCG singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you can save 5% on magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. And Mac Weldon produces premium men's clothing using code Jeff Hoagland at bit.ly forward slash Google Clothes. You can save 20% on your first order there with them. They do lots of casual wear, shirts, shorts, pants, underwear, all sorts of stuff like that. So be sure to check them out. Why am I filing for comp in the coin flip league? Because Carpulsion Minotaur is bugged. 
It just sits there and asks you from now until eternity, do you want to flip a coin again and again and again? Never going anywhere. Gosh, I'm gonna keep this hand on the draw. It's heritage double metal is real good. I'd have to go back and look. I'm actually not sure. I'd end up, I think I'd only end up plus three mana, which would put me at nine, which is not enough. Uh, we ended up getting bugged out of the fourth match. So. Looks like affinity. I'm gonna lead on Nettle Sentinel here. Well. We draw a land next turn. We're gonna vomit basically our entire hand onto the table, I think. I haven't done the math yet, but it's it's most of our hand. All of our hand? We might kill them, actually. No, don't blast me. Rude. Rude. He's just an innocent green dude. Just trying to do his best trying to get by in the world. Hey, Pi Guy, three six nine three. Thank you very much for the five month free subscription. I really appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thank you for the continued support. Almost half a year. I do appreciate it. Survey says land, land. Oh, never didn't have it. Never didn't have it. Never didn't have it. If your Xbox can use a web browser, there's a donate link right there. Things are gonna get a little cray cray next turn, chat. Things are gonna get a little crazy. We've got one card left. Shouldn't be in any danger of dying here. We might need two more turns to kill to actually kill them, though. Mm, probably didn't, too, now. Story behind the new sponsor. Uh, they're just working with an advertising company that's setting people up with advertising through Twitch streams, and they reached out to Mike. They saw I was good at chilling the products I already showed, and they're like, let's let's see if this guy wants to advertise some more stuff. And here I am. We didn't equip, oh, I guess they couldn't equip Cranial Plating to the Blink Moth. Interesting. I feel like they should have equipped here and then offered this trade. Seems like it probably would have been good for them. And I don't want to attack here because I don't want them to put counters to the Mem Knight and eat one of my Nettle Sentinels before I can get going here. I'm actually not going to be able to cast this this turn, right? Because I'm going to need to cast a, hopefully a one man elf off of this on here. Is that, is that good, chat? What do we think of that? These ones decent? What do we think? What do we think? Is this card more value than a Bloodbraid Elf? Jury's still out, but it might be.
We could possibly just like Coco into shamans and kill them this turn. We're getting mana on every one of these as well. That's a Cavern of Souls to cast the Shaman. That's perfect. Wow, we might just kill them this turn, huh? If these Cocos are really good. Then you don't have enough company hits in your deck, Milla. This is actually just lethal, right? Because I have this other Shaman here. Do we think this deck is powerful? What do we think, chat? Just use, use every bit of the buffalo here. Thanks for the entertainment and hopefully some more Hearthstone streams. Definitely. Thank you for the two-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I, uh, I'm i working out adjusting my stream schedule to get a, do a little bit more hours than I'm doing right now. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're going to add a consistent Hearthstone day when that happens. All right. All right. Um... Spellskite's probably fine here. It uh, it blocks their Arcturid, or their, what's it called? Their uh, Ravager. Can you explain why at 13? Burn is like looking at what we just did there and just like hanging its head in shame. So I get that lead the Stampede was good there, but am I, is it okay to board this out? I guess I could just cut like Elvish Visionary. Is this like a filler card and I leave some lead the Stampedes in? How many hits is this? This is... 33 hits, that's plenty of hits, right? I can do this. What do we think of this, chat? I think this is good. I want to say thank you for having an amazing stream. It's refreshing to see standards with your stream much better from the typical vulgar Twitch channels. Well, thank you for watching. I appreciate the compliment. Just try and make sure people are decent to each other here are intelligible to each other here. Gotta land, right? I think this is good. I think I like this. Let's submit. Trimming, trimming one lead the stampede. I probably don't want to gum up on this card because like not every hand is going to be the nuts heritage druid metal sentinel opener, so. This hand, we said every hand can't be that awesome, but man, this hand is probably going to get close. Anything about Soul Ward in the side of Elves? I really like it in the burn matchup. It could be decent for other aggro matchups as well. Um, so I haven't played a ton of Elves or Burn, but my buddy Mappamonte, who traveled with me to play Magic for a long time, he's played a ton of Burn, and he always said the Elves matchup with Burn was very bad. So I would say if you think your Burn matchup needs help, that's probably a fine card to help it, but I would make sure that you think your burn matchup needs help before adding a card to help burn. Remember, whenever you're making changes to a deck list in modern or anywhere, you wanna be making changes with a purpose. You don't just wanna make a change because you have the ability to make a change. You wanna have a purpose with what you're doing. Thank you for streaming lately. Your streaming has helped me through a tough relationship breakup recently and keep up the great content. Thank you for the bits, Brian. I hope you're Hope your personal self gets a little bit better. I'm glad, glad to have you here. Thanks for watching. Land there was an excellent draw. Another, another never didn't have it moment. Always yes, always yield. I think we're just gonna leave the stampede here. It's the most mana efficient, right? Maybe I'm supposed to wreck sage. 
Well, we had previously been running hot. We had previously... Maybe I was just supposed to Rex Sage the Opal there. I think I was supposed to Rex Sage the Opal there. So I'm going to attack with Nettle Sentinel here. I'm intentionally attacking before I play this because I want to untap it. I think we lost that coin flip. Look, we won a really important coin flip in the first game, so I guess I'll, I'll take my lumps where they're going to happen. I'm not an expert on elves. I can't really give you the pros and the cons. One of the smartest things you can do as an intelligent individual is defer to people that are better than you, and I don't. I'd, I'd find some, something, some written primers or some streams by people that play a bunch of elves. We're just dabbling here with a bunch of different decks, so, you know, 10 out of 10 getting whip flared here, huh? Nope, just a Ravager. God bless. I will say I think this particular build looks really streamlined. I like having the combination of Collected Company and Lead the Stampede against interactive decks, but I don't know exactly how much you're sacrificing against other things. We could just Coco and kill them because you're running hotter than the sun. That's, that's probably a possibility. I'm going to the pack and get another heritage druid here. God, eat your heart out, burn. Just like seven you. Just like zero. Zero fucks to give. Just get in there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just cast this Rex Sage. We're just like not beating a Whip Flare at this point. I'm going to take them off their... Uh... I'm actually going to take them off the Springleaf Drum because they could just have more Mox Opals. Yeah. Stone Rain you. Yeah, really, though, I do think just, like, linear better is a good sideboard plan. Just, like, just just run them down. Just just be quicker than the opponent. All right, we're two and one. I have to go back and rewatch that mirror. We definitely stumbled, but I think I made a couple of small mistakes in that, that mirror that we lost 2-1. Yeah, this, this main deck seems really trim. The sideboard's got some weird numbers in it, but the main deck in this list seems quite excellent. Yep, sign me up. Looking for a land. Never didn't have it, chat. Never, ever. We're going to lead on this guy who's got the blades. Going to put him under the knife. Get you. Yeah, Guilt Leaf Palace is very good. Guilt Leaf Palace is very, very good for sure. You don't have to play, you don't have to take any damage from your mana. You don't have to play any fetch lands. God, can I, can I just mention again how much I love not having to play fetch lands? Can I just, can I just talk about that for a minute? Never having to shuffle? Sign me up. All right, I'm just going to cast this lead the stampede next turn since they took our Arc Druid away. I just want to make sure I get that in through a Stubborn Denial. Just try and draw some cards here. Hopefully this is better than the last one. It is, in fact, confirmed better than... Let me tell you about... 
Let me tell you about a card that's better than divination. What if I told you for three mana, you could draw four cards? What if I told you for three mana, you could draw not one, not two, not three, but four Magic the Gathering cards, chat? And they gotta be really careful here. They saw the Shaman in the pack, so they they know that they're gonna gonna reach up and smack them. Land would be great here. Arc Druid, also great. These are my 1-1s. One my 1-1s one ones are amazing. Then we drew this Arc Druid. Also worth noting here, someone was talking about the Cavern of Souls earlier. The Grand Prix list didn't have Cavern of Souls because the person couldn't financially afford them that top hated the Grand Prix. Um, so if this wasn't a Cavern, I wouldn't be able to cast these right now. So like, I if you can't afford Caverns, play Unclaimed Territories, play a different, play Overgrown Tombs, you should definitely have... You should... Oh, I should have played Mystic first. Yeah, I should have played because I'm dumb. Because I'm dumb. Playing Mystic was free. Thank you for pointing that out. The reason why I didn't take the line that was good was because I wasn't thinking about it. Because this wasn't summoning six. So I could have put this into play and then used this with this and then used this, this, this to cast them. Thank you for pointing that out. Which member? This one right here. All right, so. Cast this, gotcha, ding, ding, ding. Ring a ding, ding. All right, Nuggie to 11. Yeah, they're just done. They know these are both Shaman in the packs. Get them. Get him. Go and give it to you. Go and give it to you. Do I even sideboard? Do I do I even sideboard here? Do I even sideboard? The, the relics are okay. I, I, I kind of just want to do my thing. Peace, Paracel. Lord Insurgent. I, I really just don't want to dilute my game plan. Cutting nettle for relics seems fine on the draw. I'd buy that for a dollar. I'll do that. That's a fine small hedge. Leaves us 32 Stampede and Company hits. That seems good. Seems very reasonable. Uh, thought sees like technically fight sweepers. Yeah, I think Decay's there for like hate pieces. I don't think they're quite that much more aggressive than us either. This seems okay against the discard spell. Honestly, they might take the relic, depending on what their hand looks like. Uh, a lot of the Grixis Shadow decks were playing Kozilek's Return as their sweeper of choice at one point. Sideboarding. Look, I've been playing a lot of Hearthstone lately, chat. It's taught me two things. Smorkum and sideboarding is for lazy people. Sideboarding is for people without without a good main deck. When you're when you're on the Smorkum plan, you ain't need no you ain't need no sideboard. Cage. Cage is a good one. Actually, I really like that this deck, because it's not on court, it's on lead the Stampede. It cares a whole lot less about Cage. They could Tassigurus on turn two through Chalice act through a relic activation here. Sure.
I like popping the Relic aggressively there because it cuts my opponent off potentially playing a Delve Threat this turn. So Dismember. No blocks, opponent. I don't know if they have a removal spell here. I think I just need to try and kill them. They have a team or battle rage. They have a team or battle rage. Flooding a little bit here. Like I said, Horizon Canopy is also a consideration for this mana base, but it's a pretty expensive consideration, right? They're like 80 bucks a pop or something stupid like that. I actually really like Hearthstone's tournament setup, how they do multiple decks instead of sideboarding with individual decks. I think that, that makes it, it makes it a much more interesting spectator thing. Skip Dash, I think taking mulligans to improve your hand against the deck with eight discard spells in it is silly. It's a Flying Tendrils, Delve Threat. Shaman of the Pack was actually lethal here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and smack here. And then I'll play the Heritage Druid to chump block this. So if they have nothing and we rip a Shaman, we can kill them. This is our best play to win line. I'm gonna board the relics out on the play and board the metals back in, just run our main deck back. Dead to bolt, dead to K command. Opponent's deck is 52 cards, right? We're dead to any removal or reach, so it's just how it goes. Probably this one. This one seems pretty good. It was smart on the opponent's part to set the Snapcaster Mage there because it forced us to trade with the Azuri. So just being able to chump chump and then regenerate here since we were at two. All right, Shaman of the Pack. You should watch the Green Black Rock video after that one where we play to lead with Dark Confidants and see me talk about how they're kind of mediocre and talk about the different situations they put us in where they're not great. They almost certainly had a stubborn denial. They hadn't played one yet that game. A better player would probably mulligan this hand. I think I like this version of Elves. I think if you want to play a combo, a fast combo deck, you probably shouldn't be playing Elves. Well, that's unbeatable. I mean, I didn't draw it. 
didn't matter. And no, I usually save myself 30 seconds rather than playing to the 0.1 percenter. These are my cards. My cards are mediocre. Smart to lead the stampede. Let's smack them with this to start. Would you like to take some damage? Then you should, if you don't think attacking is good, and maybe it's not, I would play a different deck. But like basically the, I feel like the decks that kind of split the difference and go half and half on their game plan seems kind of, seems kind of bad. Like, I think this deck's good as an aggressive deck, so like making my aggressive deck worse so I can be a bad combo deck doesn't seem appealing. Modern's, Modern's a format where I feel like you're often rewarded for being able to do one thing really well. So instead of being kind of shitty at two things, I'd rather be really good at one thing. So if they want to activate this Lava Man again, they have to Fetch Shock to do it. Which means the Shaman of the pack is getting closer and closer to lethal here. That was a good draw. No, this is gonna be my last league of the evening. This is our, our fifth one of the day. I'll be, I'll be back on Friday. I mean, it's an, it's an okay aggro deck, sure. With putting, putting reach into the aggro deck definitely makes it better, I think. Are they thinking about trading this Grim Lava Mancer for my board here? They might fetch shock and block plus gun down the arc druid which would leave them at three which they have a death shadow or a delve threat as a follow-up that's not a bad line do they plan on practicing blue red prison it depends on where everything's at in the queue i think i had someone donate for extra blue red prison today but people also donated for other things so i don't like to make promises until i sit down and sort out all the numbers basically Honestly, I think the bigger draw to the <laughs> Oh, baby. Hit me, baby, one more time. Ooh. Ooh, 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 my opponent was setting up a good block to trade their Lava Mancer for both of our elves, and they fetched, and they didn't have a red source left to get in their deck because they thought scoured it earlier.
And that's why you don't thought scour yourself, yep. Just, just hoping and a praying, shipping this way. All right, down to one, two, down to two. This is the fourth match of this league, yep. Card advantage, shaman, card advantage, shaman, card advantage, shaman. All right, all right, all right. It really is, JMP. They have a Snapcaster Mage, they clean our board out here, but I think it's definitely right to uh, to make them have it here. So they get to crack this fetch for, yep. So they're gonna target Fatal Push, I assume. They'll crack this fetch land. They'll Fatal Push the Arc Druid. They'll trade here, they'll be at one, which does make Shaman of the Pax lethal, which is nice. Oh, they don't have to crack their fetch land because the Snapcaster died. Collected company. Yeah, buddy. When they're at two, all elves are great. I'm holding this other Cavern of Souls in my hand, not only to conceal information, but also so my opponent can't call against command me and make me discard a spell I draw during my draw step. Fetch down to one after I put a one power thing into play. I want to cost three mana. Full, full cost dismember. Yep. Fair. Oh, I should play this land out because it's good if I draw a lead the stampede on all my mana. Dismember can cost right. This card, in fact, has other modes. I mean, to be fair, 1-1 one, one mana sources aren't, aren't awful draws here. They have to kill them because they're lethal. That's really bad for us because it means that Stubborn Denial is now live. So our collected companies and our lead the Stampedes are no longer good, which means we'll draw one. Oh, never mind. It also means we're on a four-turn clock. Lethal threat, go. Oh. Ah, I should have cast it off the cavern, doesn't matter. They probably don't have counter spells for our creatures in their deck right now. Yes, victory. What are the odds they don't have a stubborn denial? What are the odds they don't have a stubborn denial? Zero percent, less than zero percent. Read. Yep, 
Yeah, they dated nothing for a good long while, so the fact that they have separate denial is not unsurprising. No, nah, they have a separate denial in their bin here from earlier. There's no attacks is great for us though. It just means they've stoned nothing. And yeah, they're still dead to shaman. We only have two of those left though. We're through we're through two of those. Play the cavern and name instant, right? Oh, so they're playing, what's his name? Yeah, there's just no way we're gonna win this, right? Whoa, do they not have it? That would be so good for us. We need a fatal push, right? And they just discarded four discard spells of that. That's real good. They could have another delve thread as well. Wow, just packs it in. We were definitely gonna make them have it there. All right, well, got one more match for three and one. Thanks everyone for hanging out here tonight. Welcome, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I'm a full-time TCG player and content producer here on Twitch. Thanks for joining us for the end of our Wednesday night stream. I'm here uh, 30 plus hours a week, I do this full-time. If you enjoy my content and you wanna help me make more content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. Subscriptions start at $4.99 a month, or if you have Amazon Prime, you get a free channel subscription every single month if you link that to your Twitch account. Uh, that helps me stay doing this full time. You can also support my stuff by supporting my sponsors. Inkgaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience using code Jeff12. You can save 12% on custom play mats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. Cardsphere.com would love to help you turn your magic cards into other magic cards or cash directly with other players. There's no haggling, they just take 1% fee right off the top. And finally, this stream is made possible by viewers like Anironix, Justin, Nivik, and you. At the very least, if you are new and enjoying my stuff, please hit that follow button. Following the stream doesn't cost you anything, and it lets you know when I go live and with what. I always try and put the names of the decks that I'm going to be playing on a given day in my stream title, so that we can kind of get a heads up on what to expect when I go live. And if something does sound really sweet and you can't catch us live, be sure to check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland. 100% of my streams get archived there, so you can watch just the stuff that you care about. I break it up by deck and by matchups, so you don't have to waste your time sorting through decks that you didn't really care to see. If you have Amazon Prime and you like my stuff, it doesn't cost you anything. It helps me be here. Thanks everyone for hanging out. Like I said, this is going to be our last one of the nights, our fifth league. This scene doesn't have a payoff, but two lands and a bunch of mana guys. Let's do it. It's got a visionary. Visionary. Vision is scary. Start a revolution. Pluton the airwaves. I'm going to lead on Nettle Sentinel, right? Because that means I can attack for two and then go elf, land, heritage, druid, tap three, play some elves. Human, sweet. I think this matchup's good for us. I'm pretty sure I read in a book that this matchup is good for elves. This is one of the reasons. There's just so much to say. And if I if I throw the shade about not stealing music, it just takes up extra time. Because they're like we're both linear decks, but we're just a better linear deck, right? Our aggro game plan's a little bit faster than theirs. That's great. No, this is my last deck for the evening. We've been going for almost seven hours. What do we think about this turn two, chat? How are we feeling? Decent? Seems, seems okay. All right, your turn, I guess. Go ahead. This is, this is what I got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That's all. Yeah, the fish. The visionaries have been real good. We are a storm deck now. What was the storm that turn? It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we cast empty the warrens. Storm count seven, empty the warrens, go.
resolves. Collect a company. It's very unlucky. I should have played that post-combat, but whatever, smash. Uh, they named the Lord on Meddling Mage. I say if they have champion here off the vial, they could get back in this if our draws are bad. Um, that being said, like Shaman of the Packs, lethal next turn, collected company, leave the stampede, probably find our way to lethal things. So we got a lot of good stuff going for us here. If they get four blockers into play this turn, they can block one, two, three, four, and then only take four. So we actually need we actually need to get something going here to not to actually close out the game, but. We're also not under any pressure while they're playing defense, so we've got time to draw things to close out the game. That's super unfortunate. Wow, no two drop. If I shipped there, I would have connected for five. Yeah, I think it's worth it to stay back with, because uh, like the number of L's we have right now makes Shaman of the Pack lethal. So I think it's worth it to be a touch conservative here while they have nothing going on. I'm gonna send my heritage druid back here. I guess they could tag my token too. They're sending back my Dwinnin's elite. That's gotta be wrong, right? They didn't have a two drops. So they must have another three drop. They have another reflector mage. Okay, they have an image for reflector mage. This is gonna send back my token. Weird, their choices are interesting. They sent the two twos back. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, but like if they're not killing me, at least at least taking this one off the table seems ideal, right? Because this one's not going to come back. Yeah, I, I was kind of expecting them to like do this this if they had two. Yeah, the elite's gonna get another token. Wonder if they're gonna smash with the reflector mages this turn. It's probably an okay attack for them. Just the big nothings. All right, deal. Go. What does that card do? Non-elf creatures get mine. That's not even good on this board. That card's hilarious, but it's not even good here. Non-elf creatures.
No, I mean, lead the Stampede's probably lethal anyways. I think lead. The, I think I'd much rather have lead the Stampede as a way of generating card advantage in the grindy matchups. I think you're probably a favorite against Affinity, probably okay against Blue Moon, and probably really bad against Storm. Storm probably almost certainly has a faster Goldfish than you on average. Am I going to get double gibbed out of the game on this? If you have two of these, why did you even attack me? That's so annoying. Why did you make me click through shit? I don't mind them having lethal, but like, why, why attack me? You literally know the only card in my hand. I mean, it's not really a hedge against Storm because Storm's very interactive against you and Storm has two win conditions and the game Storm is killing you, they're killing you before you can stay in the mind them most of the time. Like, I think this deck is reasonable, but again, just like the games... I, I can't see my playing myself playing this deck at like the open next month for the same reason I can't see myself playing Grishel Brand at the open next month. I just I feel like both my wins and my losses by and large are out of my control with a deck like this. Like once I learn like there's definitely room to like make good plays and play optimally. But the a lot of the games I win are just me running my opponent over and a lot of the games I lose are just me kind of like falling flat and not having the right cards to line up because I don't really have card selection. I don't have I don't have interaction. So like I'm not able to like have any counterplay with what my opponent's doing a lot of the time. I'm just like dropping my smashers into play and hoping I smash better than they do. Just kind of is okay. I think I'm leaning towards playing green black right now. It's just kind of Heary deck is decent, but it just doesn't get any free wins. And I think Modern's definitely the type of format where you want to be able to kill people for free on some, some amount of your matches. Just like Discard Spell into Tarmogoyf into Tireless Tracker into Removal is like a really good curve. Rogue, you can just give him a 10 minute timeout. I didn't read the chat rules. They don't need to be here. Wanna... I they just put a graph diggers cage into play and then I cast collected company. All right, all right, all right, all right, and we're done here. Every decks, every decks three two deck chat. Never forget. Um, so I think I have my answer when people ask me what my preferred version of elves is. I really like this build of elves a lot as far as like other elf decks go. Um, the reason why I like this deck is I think it's it's very streamlined as far as being aggressive goes. I think having powerful reach in your aggressive deck is very good, obviously, to state the obvious. Um, I think lead this... I think I like that this deck has a grindy backup plan in Collected Company and lead the Stampede rather than trying to have, like, this mediocre backup plan of, like, this backdoor combo like the, the white splashes tend to do. The I feel like our combo isn't fast enough to race other combo decks compared to our aggressive plan a lot of the time, especially with this. And I'd much rather hedge the interactive decks like Jeskai and Green Black and things like that by having more card advantage in my deck to back up my aggro plan rather than having another kill you plan that's also kind of slow. Uh, at any rate, that's going to be it for me for tonight, folks. Remember, I'm not going to be live with Magic tomorrow. I might sneak on tomorrow evening and do some hearthstone if time permits but i'll be back with magic for five or six hours uh, friday night i'll be starting four or five p.m central standard time depending on when my wife gets home from work be sure to follow me on twitch and twitter for notifications and tweets on when i go live with what and uh, i'll catch all y'all around thanks for watching through the end if you didn't catch all of the stream we've been going for almost seven hours now i'm gonna go hit publish on a bunch of stuff on my youtube channel momentarily so you can catch the replays there peace folks have a good night any changes to the sideboard um These cards are great. I love these as a hedge against Bogles and Affinity. I, I, you'd honestly would want to talk to someone who's more experienced with this archetype full metal adept to know, is this the right number of non-creature spells? Because basically the thing you have to think about is that every non-creature spell you board into a deck like this is diluting your primary game plan, right? So like what matchups 
is your primary game plan bad enough in that you want to dilute it by bringing in cards like this out of the sideboard? I mentioned I think Storm's probably a bad matchup, which means these Thought Seizes and these Relics are probably okay. These Discard Spells, these are five cards that can like slow Storm down against you. But honestly, I'm really not 100% sure like where these cards are great. I guess like maybe you're just supposed to auto hedge and I, I should have boarded these in against humans because they kill Meddling Mage plus kill Graft Digger's Cage. I'd buy that for a dollar. Yeah, this sideboard actually seems pretty okay. Actually seems pretty okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I, I think this this deck looks pretty reasonable. I would if you wanted something to test, I would test some horizon canopies in the mana base. Like, you probably don't give a crap about Blood Moon a lot of the time anyways, and being able to cycle your lands will be valuable. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Have a good night, and thanks for the donations I put my lineup to push this to the top. I appreciate the support.